So this dinosaur of a camera right here is the Canon XF100. Yes, actually, when we're on set for my other channel, CK Productions, we literally call this camera the dinosaur. In reality, this camera is only 11 years old, but in camera years, that's practically ancient. I mean, so much has happened in my career and my life since then. At the time of getting this camera, CK Productions had maybe 500 subscribers, and now we're over 100K. I've won an Emmy and multiple tele awards through work. I've purchased five different cameras since then. In fact, some people that are new to filmmaking might not be able to tell you what type of camera this is. Kind of like the VCR, no, actually it's like the DVD player of Canon cameras nowadays. The Canon XF100 is considered to be a prosumer camcorder term really not mentioned much nowadays. In reality now, it's all DSLRs, it's all mirrorless cameras. But at the time it was released, it was a decent choice as a first semi-professional level camera. But now, I honestly wouldn't be caught dead using this as my primary camera. So what's changed in such little time? Now, to be fair, there are much better camcorders than this one out. Ones that shoot 4K, ones that are larger, but still none of those are being widely used in filmmaking either. On the surface, this camera actually offers a lot of cool features. It has variable frame rates, ergonomics are great. It's really easy to hold and set up a variety of different angles with it without having to use any type of camera rigs. And it has 422 color space. And it's got built-in XLR ports for microphones. I mean, this only produces HD, but imagine this all at 4K. And really the biggest, biggest advantage of a camera like this is that you don't have to worry about purchasing lenses for it. It has a great built-in lens with a huge zoom range of about 30 millimeters to over 300 millimeters. I mean, stuff like that costs thousands of dollars for other cameras. And still above all, this camera is set up more in the traditional sense, focusing and zooming are done more with gears and buttons than having to work with the lens itself. I mean, that's awesome. I would love for all cameras to do that. So what's the deal? Why has such a great sounding camera suddenly been shunned by society? Well, it's because of Plab. People love a blurry background. Blurry backgrounds give the impression of professionalism. It's just how our brains work. It makes the image in the foreground look more sharp. When in reality, if the background was sharp too, the image is still just as sharp. I mean, it's everywhere. It's in movies, it's in photography, it's in portrait mode on your iPhone. It's just a simple thing, but it's so ingrained in our minds that that's what a professional video looks like. This concept is called shallow depth of field, and that's where this camera stumbles. It just doesn't have the same shallow depth of field capabilities. If you watched my old videos in the past, you will learn that depth of field is affected by two factors. One, the aperture, and two, the focal length. And the camera does have these functions. In fact, if you do zoom all the way in, you can achieve some level of shallow depth of field. But the main issue comes down to the camera sensor. Camcorder sensors, nor their lenses, they're not designed to achieve this look. So if this is the case, why were these cameras ever popular in the first place? Well, for the longest time, filming in shallow depth of field wasn't even possible without having to shell out for a really expensive camera. I mean, if you look at any old YouTube videos or low budget documentaries from the 90s or the early 2000s, they're all shot on camcorders. That's just what was available. Then finally came along the 5D Mark II and the game totally shifted. The 5D is a DSLR. DSLRs have a very large sensor. They can take in more light and allow for shallow depth of field. And finally, there was a camera that allowed you to achieve this, not only for photography, but also for video as well, and at a relatively cheap price point. Once amateur filmmakers saw this, they immediately ditched their camcorders and started buying 5Ds. They're finally able to get their pretty out of focus backgrounds. And then everyone around them who may not know much about this goes and says, oh, look how more professional your video looks. This even happened to me too. This was the camera I wanted so bad in high school. And after I graduated, I finally got it. And I used it maybe five times until film school, I learned the glory of DSLRs. My parents got me a Canon T4i for my photography class. And once I got my hands on that, I caved. I succumbed to plat. I took my new camera and exclusively started using that for everything. All of my classic CK Productions videos, the most well-known ones, are all shot with that camera. Did my T4i have built-in ND filters? No. Did it have XLR ports? 
for audio? No. Could I have held it steady without a camera rig? No. But did I care? Absolutely not. I was getting the types of shots that every filmmaker has always wanted to get. And that's all that mattered. This camera quickly got relegated to my B cam, all because of Plab. When I was in high school, this is what everybody wanted. And now new filmmakers in high school will probably never touch a camera like this. DSLRs and honestly more mirrorless cameras are basically the standard for everything. But I would argue that this camera or at least this type of camera still has its place in today's filmmaking world. What I loved about filming with this camera was that when I was younger, I could get so many different angles of what I was filming and get them done really quickly without much setup or much work in between shots. I didn't have to worry about focus because with this camera, everything's in focus. I just would set up shots and go, go, go. I honestly get this warm feeling just thinking about it. So the question is, where does this camera have a place in today's filmmaking world? I think a camcorder is a great way for new filmmakers to start out. Everyone is just so eager to get their hands on the next best DSLR and the next best mirrorless camera. But if you're first starting out, you just might wanna consider taking a, a slight step back and just learning some of the basics first. With a camera like this, you can learn a lot about how to get a good shot without having to worry about hitting the focus. And frankly, you can do a lot of low paying jobs with a camera like this, maybe even some high paying jobs, you know, weddings, events. I filmed every one of my karate school's events on a camera like this for years and I got great results out of it. And I learned a ton about shooting and editing when doing projects like that. And you can easily run a microphone into this and get good audio. If you're still a beginner filmmaker, you don't want to go into a job with let's say a Sony a7 III and film everything out of focus and shaky and with bad audio. When you're using a mirrorless camera, you're more susceptible to having shaky video and having shots be out of focus. And if that's the case, nobody is gonna like the video that you made. Whereas in the other case, if you use something like this, you have a better chance to get stable footage and footage that's in focus. And you know, people will still like what you made. DSLRs and mirrorless cameras are great for a controlled environment because you have the time to set up those pretty shots that you want and you have the opportunity to do shots over again. It takes a lot of practice to use cameras like this in an event environment. I didn't start shooting weddings on cameras like this until I had a year of practice. Documentary style videos are also a good opportunity to use cameras like this. In these videos, there's often segments where you have to capture something going on that you don't have control over. Getting the shot in focus and having the flexibility to change your focal length on the fly is imperative in those situations. This camera makes that easy. Sure, all documentaries on Netflix have great shallow depth of field shots in them, but you know, those are being filmed by people that have decades of practice of this. Now, how do I use this camera for my work nowadays? Well, the only time I use it is for wide shots at wedding ceremonies. I'll put it on a tripod in the back and just leave it. Other than that, I don't have much use for this camera. I've gotten to a point where I feel comfortable enough to use a mirrorless camera or a cinema camera as my primary camera for a lot of shooting situations. But again, it took a lot of practice. It took years of practice. So would I recommend this camera to anyone now? Yes, but I probably wouldn't recommend this exact model. It's probably a bit too old. I would suggest maybe getting a new model of this camera or maybe the Sony PXW series or the Panasonic HC series. If you're doing a lot of projects that fall outside of the more traditional film set, experience like events or, or weddings or something like that. I think that a camcorder is actually something that you might want to consider being in your camera rotation. Not as your only camera, not even as probably your primary camera, but as a reliable option for maybe some tricky situations that need an easy solution. It's amazing how easy it is for people to get into filmmaking nowadays. But at the same time, I really do appreciate the tools that I had when I first was learning. In some ways, I actually think that it made me better. Things weren't as easy. So I had to work a little bit harder and think a little bit more outside of the box. And I think of that type of thinking and work ethic is what is helping me be successful today. No matter what equipment you're using, as long as you are a hard worker, you have a good personality, and you have a creative mind, you'll be successful as well.